Hi everybody, welcome to the Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club. Uh, this lesson, we're gonna talk about pricing of flowers. Now that is a question I get asked a lot um, over my 42 years in this industry. So when I do a lot of my classes, uh, especially like when I teach like wedding cake classes or for example, bridal spray classes, like the one shown in lesson three, the larger sugar spray, this one here, so just coming into here. So when I teach this class, for example, I give my students in their handouts a breakdown of all the prices, all right? So, so I'm gonna be talking about this one particularly a little bit later on and giving you a breakdown of pricing. But also what I've done is uh, in your downloadable resources, um, I prepared a list and this is basically all of the um, um, prices for all of the flowers in book one, book two, and subsequently some of the flowers that will be in book three. All right, so this brings you up to date with also um, the Flower Pro uh, pr products and the pricing. So uh, first of all, you know, this is obviously downloadable in your resources, so I'm just gonna read through this, but, but pricing of flowers is a question I get asked a lot. It does not matter where you live in the UK, the USA, where obviously I'm based or any other part of the world, the ingredients for flower paste, petal paste, gum paste, and air drying clay are similar meaning the cost of buying a pack of air drying clay in Asia or in Italy or here in the United States is gonna be fairly comparable. Um, also ingredients, if you're making a scratch or a homemade paste, again, they're gonna be fairly comparable, the cost of tylose, eggs, icing sugar, and et cetera. Um, so when we, uh, when we do in sugar flour, it's a little bit different than a cake. Uh, what we have to factor in is the time it takes to create the flour. So the more time you put into the flour, the more expensive it will be to the client or customer. All right. Um, so, and especially uh, if you have, obviously you're a cake artist that have a studio space or even an air drying clay artist, if you're renting space, you'll basically have a mortgage on a space, you're renting a lot of cake artists, especially here in the United States, rent what we call shared kitchen, which is basically a commercial graded kitchen you rent by the half day or the hour rate. You have to take that all into consideration, all right? A lot of you um, are pretty maybe home artists, home crafters that maybe are making sugar flowers and making obviously air drying clay flowers in your home. So there you don't really have to consider the overall running of, the, of your business and the lighting and electricity because it's part of your home that you live in. But so there are obviously sometimes changes, but that's more applies to cake than generally for flowers, but it's still something we have to take into consideration. Um, I always charge for my sugar and air drying case, for, for especially for a cake, separately. All right, so that means that uh, if you are doing a wedding cake and you're doing air drying clay or sugar flowers on it, you're always going to work out the cost in the breakdown for the client or customer separately. Um, so once you've decided with the client what flowers we're going to make, so let's say, for example, the client wants, you know, like in this little spray here, roses and stephanotis and calla leaves. So basically this is the, what they're using in the wedding. Of course, it could be different colors. You then would uh, sometimes have to sort of say to the client, well, I'll have to get back to you because you may have to go back and like in lesson three, I showed you how to take silk flowers and calculate like how many you need of each thing. So you might need to sort of obviously sit down and work out the size of the cake. You might need to make cake dummies and then get the cake dummies out, the size you're gonna make, and then sort of just look at flowers onto there and see how many you need to make. But anyway, so once you've worked out the cost of the flowers, um, then you obviously would have the individual cost of the flowers. And then on top of that, I have an arrangement fee for the ribbons and time it takes to put together. So that means that, for example, like what I showed in lesson three, where I showed you actually the wiring techniques and making the ribbons, that time all has to be paid for. And then um, also possibly a coloring or dusting surcharge. Um, now, obviously, just like a floral designer, if you went into a flower shop or into a supermarket, a grocery store, and you pick up a bunch of flowers, so especially, obviously, a, a department, a, a, a supermarket or grocery store that has an in-house floral department, um, that means if you took flowers to the um, clerk and you said, I'd like you to arrange those, obviously, they're going to charge you for that. They're not, if you just have them wrapped in cellophane, there's going to be no charge other than what the cost of the flowers are. So the thing is, is just like that, you're basically charging a surcharge charge for the arrangement part of that as well um, and then um, so remember when you have a client who wants dark colors for example let's say you had a client who wanted dark red roses you know burgundy calla lilies sometimes you're going to use a lot of color meaning a lot of pigment gel color colors dusting powders 
So that has to be basically considered in that. So a lot of time I charge a 10 or 20% surcharge when I'm doing especially very dark colors because the amount of color you have to add to the white gum paste or petal paste, flower paste, and also for all the dusts and things you use. And then another thing is I'll sometimes add a dust in surcharge. So let's say, for example, a customer chose a sort of a autumn fall rose. Like in one of my classes, I teach a rose where we make the rose in a cream color and then we dust it with like almost a terracotta color about two thirds of the way down the whole rose. And then you leave the bottom part cream, you steam the rose, then you have to leave it for about two or three hours. We then go back with a secondary color on the edge and then we re-steam it and then a third color and re-steam it. So the whole process is just taking longer. So the thing is, is that I'll sometimes put a surcharge on for, as I said, more complex color combinations. Like you'll see in the pricing when I talk about the difference between a stargazer lily that I did in book two and on the videos and obviously like the en en enchantment, the tiger lily, that's a much more basic lily. So obviously the time it takes to do the stargazer lily is a lot more time consuming because of the amount of layers of color and obviously all the different colors you're using, color components. So all of those things you have to take into consideration. Um, so here are my suggestions based on, as I said, Flower Pro Book 1, Book 2, and some of Book 3. Book 3 is obviously working on at the moment. That will be coming out sometime in 2020. We don't know exact dates, but as I said, we're working on Book 3. That also has some other super exciting things in that you haven't seen yet, which will be new things that will be added to that. So um, prices are done in USA currency, in US dollars, and then just download a currency converter to change it into pounds, euro, for example. So like on my phone, I have this uh, world currency app, okay? So this world currency app here, all right? So this is just, bring it in here. So this is just world currency app there. So obviously you just would put this in and then you can convert, for example, from US dollars um, into, um, you know, you can convert US dollars into, let's say I wanted to do it into like Indian rupees or whatever you want to do it in. So it's very, very easy to do. All right. So I'll go back to obviously to British pounds. All right. So it means that on any of your prices, you can obviously just convert from US dollars into pounds or to Euro or to Indian rupees, to South African run, to Australian dollars very, very easily. All right. And so these are the prices that I have, um, based on and this is based purely on the time it takes to create the flowers but remember as i said if you were doing a more complex coloring then you might be adding a surcharge to the coloring or a complex dusting you might be adding a surcharge to the dusting so anyway, so just it's it's all going to be listed there but you know you've got roses so what i've done is i've gone through the book obviously in order pretty much as actually the flowers as they will uh, be done in the book so obviously we start off here um, with the um, roses, which just starts here. So obviously rose cones will be included in your roses. So, but basically what I've done here is obviously based the price. So like for example, the tight rose bud, which would be the very tight one there would be $4. The bud would be five. The mid size would be six. The full size would be seven and the fully blown would be eight. So basically what I'm doing is from the bud, I'm charging $1 extra, so about 80 pence extra per layer, okay? Because you're using obviously time to put each layer on. And um, so that is based on that. And then of course, then it goes through, um, I go through the rose leaves, all right? So go through the rose leaves and then just carry on through the items. And then of course we go on to the ferns. So on the ferns here, um, I've got, you know, for the uh, small frond, which is the little tiny one, um, I've used, got that at 50 cents, and then medium frond, 50 cents, large frond, and uh, 75 cents, and then the fur and tip, which is the end part there, I've got that at $1.50, all right? So basically, once you've decided what, how many components you use on your fur, and you'll get to the total cost of the fur and piece. All right, then we've got baby's breath. So then, of course, all of the filler flowers, um, so all of the filler flowers here, I've broken those down. And again, just going through in order as the book goes. So if you have book one, you're just, it basically just relates to the book, okay? So that will go through. So obviously, you know, you've got the price for the baby's breath. And then we have um, the uh, mimosa, the pussy willow, the forget-me-nots, the cherry blossom, lily of the valley, hyacinth, bluebell, stephanotis, nicotiana, dogwood, hydrangea, lilac, bovardia, jasmine, plumeria. Okay, so that is the pricing for everything in book one. And this is the suggested price I would charge based on, as I said, time. And it breaks it down into the buds and the flowers. And obviously, um, if there are multiple sizes of buds or flowers, it goes through that. Then book two, 
lily bud. So obviously on book two, um, I've got that for the lily bud. So again, this obviously starts off with the lily bud mold. All right, so I go through that, small, medium, and large lily bud. And then we go through the, the cost of the, um, the cost of the, uh, Lily leaves, so, so we've got the so stargazer lily, um, so if you were doing a small size would be $30, a large size would be $35, and then lily leaves, and then tiger lily, I've got 25 for small and 30 for the large, because obviously the, the, dusting, the dusting on this one, all right, on this tight on the stargazer lily is more time consuming than it is on the um, orange lily, so obviously there would be more time invested in this, hence it would be a more expensive flower, okay? Um, and then we go through calla leaf, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra extra large, tulip leaves, lily of the valley leaf, hosta leaves, peony leaves, single, small, triple, large, triple, classic peony, oriental peony. Um, so for example, oriental peony, I've got that at $45. Because um, again, it's got obviously here 25 petals on here. So on your oriental peony, so on this one here. But that is also a sort of stunning flower on its in its own right. So for a wedding, you may only use that on the cake. All right, and then I've gone through the um, um, parrot tulip, French tulips, quick peony, poinsettias. So again, small poinsettia, thirty dollars. Large poinsettia, forty dollars. But again, you might be putting a surcharge on there based on a twenty percent surcharge for a more complex dusting. Some more um, some poinsettias have quite complex coloring on them, um, and then I've got. So with book three, obviously it's not released yet, but I've given you the price of the small sunflower at $10, large sunflower at $30. Um, Gerber daisy, I said my grandmother used to call gerbil daisies, but the Gerber daisies are 18. Then daisy bud, daisy flower, daisy and sunflower leaves. And then the uh, poppy, so the seed, uh, little buds, the seed head, the small flower, medium, large flower, the leaves, so the poppy, maple leaves, ginkgo, um, and then uh, the ivy leaves, the cost for a small, medium, and large. And then in the wedding foliage mold, which is the new mold that obviously we will be launching officially on May the 4th, but you've had access to uh, two weeks prior to that on the 17th. So, um, but uh, that is the baby blue eucalyptus, the silver dollar, the seeded eucalyptus English box with Italian Ruscus and Dusty Miller. Okay. And then I've also put on this list um, the um, other flowers promoted so like for example the daffodils which I did in lesson two um, the daffodil will how I would price those out uh, David Austin Rose which is one of the hands-on um, virtual classes so the cost of the bud and the flowers and the leaves obviously it says see rose leaves which would be on the first page and then um, we have here the sweet pea which is another uh, virtual class that we'll be doing in the future and uh, so those are both hands-on classes uh, virtual classes but that's the breakdown of that and as we add um, new products to Flower Pro, so as obviously new molds come out, as some of the new exciting ones we have coming out in the summer and the fall and things, and as we add um, obviously new flowers to this group, so as I show you how to use obviously your Flower Pro mold to make additional flowers, then I will be of course going through and updating this list as well, or just sending you obviously an updated list and tell you that it's on the downloadable, um, as I said, uh, resources, all right? But uh, as I said, so this is just purely based on, obviously I've based this on the time it takes me to make the flowers, and that obviously is usually what I would recommend you charge for the client. But remember, you take the prices, which I'm gonna talk about now, and then you'll see how I sort of take the subtotal and then add the arrangement fee, and then also the ribbons. And then, um, of course, if you're wanting to uh, cover cost of your ingredients, like we would, especially on a cake, uh, we take that in consideration as well, all right? So, so that's the, the first part. So that's obviously one of the downloadable sheets. Now, the second part of this is paste costs, all right? So this just gives you an idea of cost. So um, I'm gonna start off with the air drying clay first. So this is here, uh, we have the hardy soft clay. So we've got here air drying clay. So we sell this in our retail store here in Atlanta for $12.99. So it's $12.99 US dollars. That's 200 gram pack. If a customer or a student was ordering this, you have to take into consideration it might be $6, it might be $10, for example, shipping or postage, all right? So you have to take that in consideration. So whatever your end cost ends up being, because if you live in the UK and you're having to order your petal paste or your flower paste, you know, you have to take into consideration the postage has to all be taken into consideration in your final cost. 
So whatever your cost of your paste ends up being, by the time you've paid for postage or shipping on there, you would then, um, this is a 200 gram pack. So what I've done is I've taken, so obviously I just got this from my retail store, so I haven't had to pay obviously any postage on it. But uh, so if you had uh, 12.99, you divide that by 200, that's 0 0.064 um, cents per gram, okay? Now when we, um, in lesson one where I did air drying clay, I showed you how to take, um, I showed you the little bag of paste, what I give my students in the class, which actually is 34.5 grams of paste, all right? So if you take the 0 0.064, you times it by 34.5, that means the cost of what I'm giving the students is $2.24. Um, as I showed you in the class, this finished spray actually weighs just under 20 grams. So you actually can make 10 of these out of this one pack, all right? So, um, so if you are doing to do this really accurately, what that means is I use 20 grams of paste. So it actually costs $1.28 to make this spray as far as the paste goes, all right? So obviously if you went to your um, here, so $1.28, that's one pound, one pence. So basically a pound, all right? So it costs one pound for the paste to make this. All right, which when you think about it, as I said, you, you sort of, uh, it's very uh, economical product to use, all right? So then, so we know how much the, uh, the paste cost. And then in, in this, it just goes through, and pretty much these are all come from the original list. I've just discussed the full list, all right? So you've got your tight rosebud, rose, the leaves, three, three small leaves, three large leaves, ferns, a stephanotis, baby's breath, calorie, hydrangeas. So the total cost of the flowers in this for making each of the flowers would come out at $32.50. All right, then I've charged a $5 arrangement fee. That means the time it takes to make the two ribbons and then cover the cost of the ribbons and then also putting this together, which is pretty quick. I mean, it's like less than 10 minutes it takes to put this together. All right, so I've charged that out at $5. Then ingredient cost, if you wanted to take that in consideration, that's $1.28, all right? So that means that your total, grand total, is $38.78. All right, so again, just gonna cancel that out. So $38, so $38.78. So basically 30 pounds and 72 pence, all right? So basically say like 31 pounds, all right? So that's what I would think of as a basic selling price for this spray. So if I was selling this to a customer, now, for a lot of you that don't have, um, for example, overhead expenses of having to rent a studio space or pay employees, um, you know, things like that. Those are all things, you know, insurance for your business and things like that. Those are all things you have to take into consideration. So then when you, um, so it says in here, so this will be based on a home flower business. So if you had like an Etsy store or obviously you made sugar flowers or air drying clay, but if you're using a rented mortgage space, you shared kitchen, then you'll take that 38, 79 and then 78, and then you would double it um, for 100% profit, which means that basically you would be selling that at $77.56, all right? So, so you would double that. So that means you're gonna get sort of like 100% profit on that. So you're covering, and then that means also if you had an employee that you were paying um, to do certain things, like they may make the rose cones, they might be doing the dusting, because you have to take into consideration payroll as well, which is the biggest part of a business, all right? And then of course you could also do 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90%, depending on what your markup would be, all right? And then of course, remember on this, if this was in really um, more um, unusual colors or more intricate colors or colors you have to spend a lot of time on, like even on a hydrangea, I mean, I just did these fairly simple, but if you were doing say blue hydrangeas with purple and different colors on, you might do a 10, 15, 20% surcharge on dusting, okay? So that is sort of how you get to the end price, all right? And so basically you have your grand total and then you, you go from there and you could basically, if you wanted. Now, of course, some, if you had a business in New York, I mean, like I have cake artist friend who have obviously businesses in New York, very expensive rent in London, a lot of other cities in the world. So you have to take into all of those things into consideration. So uh, you obviously you might be doing 150% markup to cover your overheads, all right? So that is how you get to the end price of a spray. Now in the, um, here, I've given you the breakdown on the sugar flower spray. And uh, so this was obviously made in gum paste, in gum paste, flower paste, all right? Now, so again, you've got several options with that. You have 
first of all a homemade paste now if you follow the recipe in the books here all right this is my Tylo's gum paste recipe here. This is really the cheapest option because this will cost approximately US dollars about $6.50 per batch and that is a uh, nearly a 1 kg batch all right so that's basically nearly 1 kg which is twice the size of say for example a Renshaw pack and that will cost about $6.50 all right, so that is really your cheapest option, but then also you have to take into consideration the time factor of making the paste, so that all has to be taken in, and if you were paying an employee to make it for you, again, you have to take payroll into consideration. But that is your cheapest option. If you use a lot of um, gum paste, flour paste, obviously, as I said, making it yourself is obviously basically the cheapest thing, like a lot of things we do at home, but you have to take into factor of the time as well. Um, because this uses just egg whites, um, icing sugar, powdered sugar, tylose powder, and vegetable shortening or vegetable fat, all right? Um, so as I said, that costs approximately about $6.50 uh, per batch to make, all right? So uh, based, based on that, um, so as I said, just using my, so six fifty. all right? So that's about $5, 5 pounds, 15 pence. So about five pounds a batch, all right? So pretty reasonable, um, considering you get close to one a kg out of that, about two pounds, okay? Um, now then, you have uh, obviously other paste. So for example, like here in the US, this is the Renshaw gum paste that I use for a lot of my videos, a lot of my classes. Obviously in Europe and the UK, this comes in a 250 gram pack, all right? We, in the US, we have it in a box and this has got two 250 gram packs in here, all right? So we sell this in our retail gallery for $12, okay? So that's $12 for um, that pack. Um, so again, you see what I've done, so $12, you divide by 500, that's 0 0.024 cents per gram. Um, when I do this class, all right, so when I do this class, I give my students 340 grams of paste. And after they finished all of their flowers, what they normally have left in a little plastic bag, is about 120 grams. So that means it's used 220 grams, all right? So if you then took 0 0.024, you times that by 220, it actually cost about $5.28 for the paste in this piece, all right? So then what I've done here is I've done a breakdown. Now, some of these flowers are obviously in Flower Pro books, the Bavardia, the Forget-Me-Not, um, the Calla Lee, but the Anemone is not, and that will be a flower we will be covering in this group, this club. And uh, also berries, those are just little balls of paste, but you could use the holly berry mold for that as well. But anyway, so when I work out all the cost of that, um, and then the, the buds here, you'll see how the flowers, all right, so when we did the more simple blossom rose, which is covered in the books, all right, that, that blossom rose there, that is, I had at $4, um, $4, 5 6 7 and 8 These roses here are $4, 6 8 10 and 12 And the reason is these roses are made with individual petals, all right, so the process is a little bit more time consuming. So rather than putting on five petals at a time, these are individual petals, they're dried in a spoon. And as I said, so the process is a little bit more time consuming. So that is hence they're a little bit more expensive because they take longer to do, okay? But anyway, so, so this gives you, um, so the cost, of, the cost of those flowers, all right, so the total cost of these flowers um, that you see here in this spray, all right, that is $137.75. And then the ribbons and arrangement fee, I've charged $50. And the reason is, is obviously this was only, you know, $5. This takes a lot longer to put together, all right? So this is probably about, an, for most of my students, it takes them about an hour to put this together in a class. So I've charged the hour $50. So subtotal, so total you have is $187.75 or about 150 pounds, all right? So if I was doing this for a wedding cake, I would be charging about 150 pounds um, or about 187, $190 for this spray, all right? It, uh, what I found helps a lot with the customer or your client, it helps them understand the cost of the individual components. If you just told somebody what's well, $150, but if you break it down into individual components, it's a lot easier for them to understand where all the pricing comes from, all right? Now, on, um, on this list, I've also 
done some just general information on pricing of cakes. Now, it doesn't really apply to Flower Pro, but a lot of you obviously make sugar flowers or air drying clay flowers that go on cakes. So this is when I teach my students, like for example, at the French Pastry School, we do a lot of business side of cakes. So we talk about um, obviously pricing structure. So when you're doing, for example, a cake, uh, most cake decorators work on approximately $35 of an hour plus ingredients. That $35 an hour will cover payroll overheads if you have obviously a business. A lot of people double that. So if you have an employee who took one hour to make a cake and it costs $35 for ingredients, that would mean you're covering the $35 covers payroll and overheads and insurance and $35 for the ingredient. That means that you are, it's going to cost $70 if that cake takes one hour. So then if you double that for your profit, you'll be selling that cake at $140, all right? And that is sort of how you would go to, um, to obviously pricing structure, all right? So this just talks a little bit about the, you know, that obviously cakes here in the United States, we generally sell cakes by per serving, all right? And so for example, when we do a wedding cake, you might be doing 220 servings. And uh, at the moment, uh, the, the cake serving cost is around, it's just obviously in 2020, is around about $6 per serving, okay? So about five pounds per serving. And remember, our cake is a sponge cake, so it's four inches high, and our serving is two inches, so five centimeters by one inch, 2.5 centimeters by, um, 10 centimeters or four inches high. So a little bit bigger in the UK, you know, traditional fruit cake is only served as a one inch by one inch, 2.5 by 2.5 by three inches or 7.5 centimeter depth, uh, because we serve cake more as a dessert, not so much as just a toast. But as I said, so our cake at the moment is about $6, but that could go up to 15 to $20 a serving. I have seen wedding cakes in New York and Las Vegas that have been selling for $45, $50 per serving, okay? for a two inch by one inch piece of cake. Because if you obviously have a very high rent to pay, that has to be taken into consideration when you're doing that. But anyway, so this just breaks down a little bit on um, obviously the use of your paste. Um, now, of course, there are you know other pastes as well. Like for example, this is a Rati's paste from India. So this is a starch-based paste. So this is a little bit more expensive because this is we sell for $9 for a 250 gram pack. All right, so obviously, um, this this here is twelve dollars for five hundred grams. Okay, so that means six dollars for, as I said, two hundred and fifty grams. So this is about fifty percent more expensive. But also, you can roll this a lot thinner. Okay, so the thing is, is that there are sometimes playoffs for different pastes. All right, but as I said, so that just gives you a little bit of um, an idea on pricing structure. But a lot of this is going to be dependent on maybe where you live in the world. Um, as I said, you know, your overhead, your cost of ingredients. But a lot of times it's sometimes really useful to calculate how much you're actually spending on product. Because a lot of my students, especially talking more about cakes, what they'll often do is they'll make a cake. And then when they actually, if they were to sit down and calculate the cost of the ingredients, their time, uh, the electricity they've used to bake the cake, the refrigerator to store the cake in, all of those things have to be taken into consideration. A lot of times they're not even covering the cost of their uh, product ingredients, all right? So it's, a, it's important to uh, have an idea about where your pricing structure comes from. And as I said, this is just a guide, all right? So it just, as I said, just to give you a sort of foundation and just as I said, to show you how I um, basically start off and based it all on, on really hours or minutes it takes to make a flower. Once you get used to making sugar flowers, of course, naturally you're gonna become quicker at making them as well. And then the other thing is, is you have to take into consideration is that um, when you're doing multiples of things, you're gonna do like production line, you get pretty fast at doing it as well. All right, now when I come back, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I pack up sugar flowers. So potentially if you had a client that wanted you to mail them, to ship them, to send them to them. And we're also gonna talk about air drying clay as well, just to show you how I wrap that up. So I'll see you real soon. So a question I get asked a lot about how do you send flowers to somebody? So here in the United States, a lot of, and in the UK, a lot of people have Etsy store. Etsy is a basically an online store for handcrafted items. So that's a perfect outlet to sort of set up an Etsy store to be able to sell air drying clay and sugar flowers. I have several students and members of Flower Pro Group that actually have businesses on Etsy and they make air drying flowers and also sugar flowers. Now, of course, 
Sugar flowers are a little bit more um, difficult to pack because of the fact of them being more fragile. Air drying clay is definitely something I would recommend over sugar for a client, plus also the whole keepsake thing and you know that they're gonna arrive and there's not gonna be any damage, okay? Whereas sugar, you have obviously potential problems. And I'm gonna show you how I pack up each of them a little differently. So I'm gonna start off with air drying clay. Now this is the air drying clay spray. So presuming you sold this to a customer and uh, you've made it in the color that they wanted. So what I would normally do is just find a suitable box or container, all right? This could be like a plastic container or a box that this would fit in, okay? And then what I normally do is I just wrap this in uh, plastic wrap. So you just use like cling film, uh, press and seal also works really well. Um, this is actually just from um, to wrap up furniture. So it just is almost like plastic wrap, but it's on a roller. So I like this, I use this a lot in classes. And then what you do here is you just would wrap around the, you can do this with cling film and that as well. And this just, as I said, really just protects it from, uh, as I said, getting dusty. I'm just gonna wrap that, that up. And then you would then just pop that into the box. All right, so just pop that into the box like that. And then you can use some tissue or some more plastic wrap just to sort of put in the top of it like that, you see? And that's really all you need. Now, really, to be honest with you, especially if you were shipping like, let's say for example, a mail-in posting in the UK, if you were sending this to somebody in the UK or here in the US, I was sending this to a customer, I could just tape this up, put an address label on that. This would be perfectly okay because it's not gonna rattle or move around anywhere in there and you don't really need any other packing in there. Now, if you're doing individual flowers, um, so for example, if you were doing, let's say like succulents, so if you're doing succulents like this, again, you can use the same concept of taking the plastic wrap. This is also like how I would show you how I do sugar ones. I'm just gonna go around my finger a few times to take that off. So you're gonna make almost like a sort of a, a donut bagel shape. And then you can actually just put that and then you could then actually sort of wrap on top of that and that would just protect the whole thing and just also stop it like obviously moving around or rattling or things like that, okay? And you can just pack that like this and you'd pack, say if the customer wanted three succulents, just pack those in the box. They'd arrive beautifully, um, as I said, intact without any problems on. That can also be done with, can also use just toilet paper And uh, toilet paper is actually what I use because most of my classes I teach here in Atlanta are sugar classes. So when I wrap up my flowers for my students, we just use toilet paper because it's soft, okay? And again, you can just take your flower like this. You can just put this in. This would be also how, like if I was doing a um, sugar succulent, how I would pack that up and then I would put it into the box, all right? But anyway, so once you've got your flower um, wrapped, as I said, you literally could just put some tissue paper into there obviously a little bit more tissue paper or some, some other types of plastic wrap, a little bit of bubble wrap, just to make sure you fill the box up. And that could go like this. Now, if for example, I was going to be sending this, let's say from the United States to Canada or to somewhere in the Caribbean. So somebody's having a resort wedding in Jamaica and I had to send this down to Jamaica, I probably would just do an extra step and that would be to use just a larger box um, so I would just use a larger box like this. And then what I would do is I would just put some, these are just some peanuts. So just put some peanuts into the box here. And then I would just put the box in. So make sure obviously that's a little bit smaller. Then I would just fill up around the box with the peanuts here. And you could have used some additional, you know, packing in there just to secure that. And then you just would, so once it's got kind of filled up with the peanuts, you just would secure that. And then obviously then, but this is very lightweight. And obviously the advantage of that is when you're sending, especially international, it means that the, um, if something gets dug into the box, especially if it's flying, um, it's not going to get obviously damaged because you have an internal box within a box, all right? So this is how that I would generally would do um, air drying clay flowers, all right? So that's sort of how we would do air drying clay um, flowers there. But you know, these are like an air drying clay peony, so it makes it very, very easy to use. I'm just gonna bring up a couple of images on my iPad here. These are some 
um, air drying clay cymbidium orchids. So last November, um, Benny Rivera, who's a very close uh, pastry chef friend in New York from City Cakes, Benny Rivera got married and uh, I made the flowers for his cake. So these, this is actually just a fondant, a rolled fondant sugar paste bucket, um, a 22 pound bucket. The, what I did here is I just did actually use the paper, some toilet paper around the flowers. And then when I got to New York, I was able to obviously put the flowers together. So I put them into a spray. This is, shows the knife server that Benny and Anderson had. So like I showed obviously um, in the uh, uh, how to wire the flowers. So I showed about wedding cake knives. But you see here, obviously the flowers, and you can see this was a beautiful cake that Benny created and I did the spray of cymbidiums. Now I did these in air drying clay because I actually made these in Chicago. So when I was in Chicago, at the French pastry school, I was actually made the flowers. Then I just literally packed them into a bucket and then with a uh, fondant bucket with tissue, I flew back to Atlanta. And then I literally just put that bucket of them into my suitcase with my clothes and just check that as a piece of luggage. So that went in the hold of the aircraft. So I didn't have to hand carry them or whatever. Um, so that's a sort of an advantage of the air drying clay. Um, this also shows, just showing another these are some air drying clay roses. I made these for a pastry chef friend of mine, uh, Tina Cordin, Ariana, her daughter, who's a constant pianist. Um, she um, made the flowers because unfortunately I couldn't go to the wedding because I was on the way to India. But again, see, I made um, the spray, the posy of roses, and then I made a, another posy, and then I had Phalaenopsis orchid. So I made those all in air drying clay. Again, these were packed, and then these were sent to a pastry chef of Thomas in um, New York and then they were taken off of out of the bucket and then basically put onto the wedding cake all right so that's really the big advantage of the air drying clay as far as the durability of it that you don't have to really as I said worry too much about the packing of the product it's a very sellable product to customers and also the fact that it is a keepsake so they can obviously enjoy that afterwards when we come back I'm going to talk about packing sugar flowers now with sugar flowers, all right, so when we are doing sugar flowers, for example, if I was teaching the oriental peony, this is my flower pro oriental peony, if I was teaching this in a class, and when my students fly home, normally what we do is we would just pack the peony like this. So you're just putting like the sort of the ring of paper around this. This would also apply to things like sunflower, gerber daisies, things like that because then when they sit in the box, so if they were being put into, for example, like a lot of times we use like rolled fondant buckets for the students, like larger size one or boxes or containers. So you see then the flower can sit in there really nicely. So I could get a couple of peonies in there. So you might have a client who obviously is gonna come and collect the flowers and then they would then, they could basically hand carry this so they could carry this on the plane or obviously drive with this without any problems, all right? But the toilet paper works really, really well for this. Now, if I was going to ship this or mail it to the client, how I would do that is I first of all would find a, usually a plastic container, all right? This could be something you have at home or I said this is from rolled fondant from sugar paste. It could be obviously something you buy, just a basic plastic storage container. It doesn't have to be an expensive one, but something that will accommodate this. It's just it's a little bit stronger than a box. And then what I would do is I would take the, in this case, so if I was going to be sending this peony, all right, what I've done here is I've bent the wire of this. So I've taken a block of styrofoam, okay, and I want to just sort of put it in because I'm going to hot glue this into the bottom of the box. So what I do here is I just have made a sort of a channel. So I just use my pliers here and just made a sort of a channel for the wire to sit into. So my, my flower will sit upright and will just sort of sit into this, into the styrofoam. So you see it's actually sort of sitting into that channel like this, you see? All right. Now what I would then do is I would take uh, the container and then I would take a hot glue gun. All right. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put some hot glue into the bottom of the container. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue into the bottom of the container. Then I will position my flower, obviously in the middle here. So that's going to position that into the middle. All right, making sure what's really important that you can't see anything out the top, all right? So obviously it's gonna be under. So you might need to open the petals up a little bit. Now, of course, you might have to do like a little YouTube video for your customer. And also what I would always do is just take a photograph of your flower 
like this because then they'll have an idea about what's coming but also how it's in there because you just have to explain to them who's going to carefully go inside. Now what I'm doing here is I use um, little tiny peanut like these are little foam pellets. Now these are um, Greg Cleary who's one of our ambassadors for Flower Pro lives in Australia. He uses this technique when he travels a lot internationally and I've used this very successfully shipping flowers all right. Um, so you can find these on Amazon, they're just like small pellets, the type of thing you put in a bean bag. And what you do here is you're just going to fill up, you're just going to fill up, so you see how I've actually sort of just filled the, filled this up, and then literally I would just fill this up to the top. Now when your customer receives the flower, all right, they're going to You'll have to give them instructions, but the easiest thing to do is basically just to, um, obviously you need to work in a box or somewhere it's going to catch it, but if you just take the little pellets and if you just blow a hairdryer, so if you just take a hairdryer and you just blow that onto it, it's going to blow them all out, but you want to be, as I said, working in like in a bag or in a box or something that's going to catch them. Well, the other thing you can do is you can just, of course, um, just sort of gently start to scoop them out. So they use like a spoon and scoop them out, all right? But you see what's going to ha what's happened here is I've just packed this in. So this has packed all of the flowers here, all right? And you're just going to put this in till it's sort of level. So it's a little bit messy, but this is a really, really great way to pack them. A lot of people I found make the mistake when they're, um, especially shipping flowers, they overpack them, all right? This is going to protect everything perfectly. And then what you do here is you would just put this lid on, okay? And then once you've got the lid on, again, we put this into a box. I probably would use a slightly bigger box than this. I'm just showing you um, an example, but you put this into a box. So again, then you can take your regular, your regular peanuts, the foam peanuts, put that into there. And then you can put the plastic container into here. And then you can either take you know, like obviously there are lots of options here. I mean, you have for packing, things like this, but the advantage of peanuts is that you can really make sure, but you could also use a couple of the air pocket pouches as well. And then you can finish that off with, uh, with uh, the peanuts there. So then you can just take the, and this is gonna just sort of make sure you get these all the way down the But see, this technique means that if the um, flower spray, if the box is turned upside down, nothing is gonna happen to the flower inside because it's totally protected by all those little tiny foam peanuts, all right? And then what I do here, make sure it's a nice tight fit, you tape this up. And then I would suggest putting, um, you know, fragile this side up stickers on here, obviously put those on the four sides of the box. Um, and then you'll, as I said, when you ship that, but basically this, isn't going anywhere. When I rattle this, it's gonna, and if this peony flower in there would be perfectly okay when your customer takes it out, all right? So this is the, the best way to ship it. Now, um, as far as like if you were shipping a whole wedding cake, the only way to really do that is to actually use a freight company and use a door-to-door -door service, which is very expensive. I mean, like for example, I've sent cakes from Atlanta to, uh, for example, Washington DC, and it costs about 500 US dollars but the thing is, is what happens is the cake goes on a pallet, you use that wrap to wrap it on and it's then lifted in a forklift truck into a van, it's then driven straight to Washington DC. So door to door service is really the only way to go with that. And, uh, but as I said, this way, this is a very successful way of doing sugar flowers. Now again, a couple of years ago, so again, just showing you here on my iPad, this was a spray of flowers I made. Sorry, just gonna try to, there we go. All right, so this is a sp spray of flowers I made. So this has got like cherry blossoms and anemones um, and uh, little dahlias that I made. And uh, these were shipped to Chef Benny Rivera and in New York. So I used a larger, I used actually a 22 pound fondant bucket. I actually had a cake dummy in there. So a three inch, two inch high cake dummy. I just cut down to fit the bucket, hot glued that in the bottom, filled it up with the peanuts. And then these were the flowers on the cake. So then when this was sent to New York and then Chef Benny did the actual cake part here. There it goes, there, it goes. there we are. So Chef Benny did the cake part. And so I made the flowers, he made the cake. 
these ship, there wasn't one pedal or one calyx broken. Um, and that was done in exactly the same technique as I've just shared with you, using the little tiny foam uh, pellets. So it is, uh, as I said, you know, a little bit messy for your customer at the other end, but it is a way of guaranteeing because even if you use a lot of toilet tissue or things like that, now a lot of people try to use like the foam peanuts and the thing is you need something really small. So that's why those little tiny pellets and uh, on Amazon, I just think I just call them like beanbag pellets, the little tiny pieces like the size of rice. And uh, those are really the ones you want to use to pack your sugar flowers. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson on obviously pricing of flowers. I know it was a lot of discussion, not so much showing things, but obviously that's a very important part of our industry. So hopefully, especially those of you who have businesses, hopefully this will help you with your pricing structure, showing you how to break things down. And maybe some of you might think of opening an Etsy store or an online craft store, selling uh, pre-made sugar or air drying clay flowers. And I hope you found the part at the end showing you how to pack flowers for mail-in for shipping to a customer helpful. Until next time, see you real soon. Sweet wishes. Bye-bye.